Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you for this preview bonanza for the quarter finals. This is the same format as we're accustomed to. There's no double lives. It's just single elimination, best of five. So now we're in our comfort zone, Mark. It's the traditional knockout stage rolling on through after the experimental Swiss stage that we we ran on through. Feeling happy, feeling excited, looking forward to these matchups. I think that what we ended up getting, the way that it drawed out, sure, you can have a couple little nitpicks here or there. Overall, these are probably the best matchups that we could have gotten in these quarterfinals, and they really set up, if things play out either way, some of the juiciest semifinals that we could possibly have at this Worlds. Somehow all four LPL teams get out of uh, the Swiss stage and they, no civil war. Theoretically, you could have four LPL teams representing in the semifinals, but nobody was happier with the draw than NRG. Despite they're going to be underdogs, as they should be, against Weibo, especially because they got smashed by them in the Swiss stage. But this is the team that you feel like NRG has the best chance to beat and the team that looked the most up and down out of the top eight in the Swiss stage. I, I've seen really two reactions to it. And one of them I think can easily be dismissed and it's people going, what, what do you mean this is the favorable matchup? It's still the Shy, it's still Shao, this is still Weibo Gaming, they can do it. Guys, you see the you other look, six teams? You realize where you are. That is the type of territory that comes with being at the top eight of this event. Everybody is gonna be a dangerous shark swimming in these oceans. And you gotta be able to handle yourself against even the, the littlest, most inconsistent of sharks out there in the ocean of Weibo Gaming. Now we look at number one and it's gonna be, how do you stack up? How do you challenge this team? Where is that type of level? Well, let's turn back the clock to when you're taken down and beating the clocks out of G2. It's all about your man in the jungle contracts. Contract needs to be that type of presence, that type of threat, that type of utility for this NRG squad if they're going to have any chance of hanging around with the rest of Weibo Gaming. Because if Contracts is in shape, in form, he's getting the rest of everybody on set, then I think you're in a capable spot where you're going to be able to handle these fights. And that's probably the best uh, or the most obvious reason why this is the best matchup for NRG is because no disrespect to Weiwei, he's a great jungler, but you look at every other jungler that you could be matching up against and it is a much taller task for contracts to be going of opposite. We know he's at the top of the damage numbers for these junglers. All the early game runs through him. Other thing to look at is going to be that Senna. Tom Kench combo that we saw NRG dominate with. Is that something Weibo's going to let through early on in this series? Because the story always for Western teams in these underdog series matchups is you got to win game one to get some confidence. And it's one of these things we talk about, or I like to bring up so many times. Did you do your homework? Have you looked up? Have you figured it out? And can you put it out there on the test is the question for Weibo Gaming. Looking at what we've seen from NRG, I don't think it's even about doing your homework at this point. It's simply a respect. Do you ch challenge this Tom Kench Senna duo? Do you challenge NRG, the FBI and Ignar bot lane and say, you know what? No, you're not good enough that this warrants a ban to take away. We still want to control the phase into the way that we want to. We can deal with that. That's not that important. Or is it one of these situations where they say, you know what? That was really nasty against G2. A G2 that was able to best Weibo Gaming. Maybe we should be considering knocking that out and taking our chances with something else. And that's, again, is it implemented right in game one? Do we see that ban? Do they cheese at game one? And then Weibo says, ah, no, no, no. That's, that's the beauty of these best of fives is seeing uh, the meta and pocket picks develop in within the microchasm of a single series, which would be something to look for. Then you're talking top lane. Obviously, the Shy versus Dokla is a fun matchup. We already heard Dokla saying, I learned from last time. I ain't playing Orn into the shy this time. 
And I think that's the secret because that's gonna unlock that key of how Big Dokes is gonna actually play like Big Dokes. And that's what you need if you're in a matchup against the Shy. Because I think if you're going into this one saying, okay, we're expecting this is a type of advantage or we're gonna smack it down. We're gonna try to lessen his event, all these type of things. It's not gonna work out. You gotta play your game into someone like the Shy. You gotta have that jungle help. That's a big one. We know that that is a big weakness of the Shy, of course, is that enemy jungle help and that presence being there. We're gonna have to keep a close eye on that one. Dokla did step up against Broken Blade and thoroughly dismantle it. And this is one of those ones where I think Broken Blade didn't quite have the edge against someone like the Shy in that matchup, but certainly had his big moments as well. So looking at, the, at Dokla to have that type of impact, that type of energy for this energy squad. Finally, the angle, I'm, I'm Peyton for an LCS upset again is, I know the first matchup, Jahu was in Palafox's head, calling him <laughs> a genius, but you look at the body of the work of the Swiss stage as a whole, Palafox was outperforming what we saw out of Jahu in all the other matches. Let's just lay this flat out right now. Pretty much out of every other matchup other than the Weibo Gaming head-to-head, -head, Palafox did look like a clever G Maybe the Talia alt backwards on the Silas executed a little bit more. You know, maybe he was thinking three steps ahead. We couldn't see it. I, you never know. 4D chest with your man Palafox in the mid lane. Yes, really excited to talk about this one because relatively so, of course, the name, the, the weight's going to be shifted a little bit different in the power respect. But you look at the numbers. You look at the results of this event. You look at the champions played, the difference made on them, the big plays. I'm looking at Palafox and what he has brought to the table. That Nico pick is a big one that I'm, I want to be highlighting on how he was able to play those big ultimates. Chow, I think really outside of Azir. I've not really seen him have that pop of have that Shahu type of impact, which was necessary for Weibo to unlock that top tier of play, that one where they could contend with the very best of the LPL. That's when Shahu was popping off in that mid lane as well. Not quite at that level yet. We'll see if this Weibo beast wakes up against NRG. I'm feeling the CLG magic. Do, do I hear, hear a, a magical LCS top four out of you as well, Mark? Oh, you know what? I can't resist. I can't resist biting into that one. I'm taking it the full distance. Silver Scrapes, Palafaker in the mid lane. It is going to be NRG locking it up top four. Man, game five would even be more impressive to have that clutch factor, <laughs> to be able to take down an LPL squad. The only matchup of these quarterfinals that I'm looking at and saying, ah, maybe double elim elimination would be good. Is that T1 versus LNG? Because as we've both said, both of these teams have shown a level that they are capable of being top four, maybe even a finalist at this event. So it is a bit of a tragedy that one of these teams will be leaving in quarters. Everyone is so good. That is the consequence. When you have too many teams that you love, too many teams that you think are so good, you're going to wind up with a matchup like this where you got to say goodbye to someone you don't want to say goodbye to at this point in the tournament yet. T1 versus LNG. I think without question, when you look through these matchups and even maybe even understanding or understating the type of power that a JDG or a Gen G represents as that number one seed, those ones that locked in the top eight early, T1 and LNG, LNG, these guys are right there. That is that toughest matchup that we're going to be looking at. Faker versus Scout. Let's see it again. Yeah, this feels like a historical turn back the clock because we've been hyping up Skype what he did in the Swiss stage LPL MVP Faker's taking a step back again more of the overseer in-game leader this feels like a time to show up against Scout in these all important best of fives which is when we know Faker levels up he's he's like LeBron James coasting in the regular season waiting until that playoff marquee matchup comes and this is it right now he's as someone else with a bad hairline, I can at least say Faker's got a better hairline than LeBron's got going on. So we'll still pick that one for our greatest in League of Legends. I'm looking at that jungle matchup. I'm looking at your boy owner up against Tarzan in the jungle because what we have seen recently, the recent games out of T1 or the most recent that we had seen was really strong stuff out of owner. Owner He's probably up at this event Woo. at his peak. Tarzan is another level and is going to be another check for T1 to test. Are you for real? Are you at that level to test at the ultimate test, the dance for worlds? The other one I'm looking at is that bottom lane. Guma versus your boy Gala. Let's see what you got. Gala arguably 
long-standing uh, ADC in the in the LPL, one that has been dominant, has been a top-level guy, and one we have seen style on the Kaisa already at this tournament. Let's see what you got, Guma. And that's a bit of old MSI revenge tour for Guma as well, because in that RNG gala <laughs> matchup, it was all RNG bot lane in that series. So long time coming revenge for him. And then if you're saying owner has kind of leveled up to close to the level that Tarzan is at, Zeus would have been a big advantage over uh, Zika in this one. But Zika has been leveling up to meet that, meet that Zeus level at this event as well. And that one's going to be really interesting because the expectation, and it should be, is that Zeus is going to have that edge, is that he will win out in that top side and have that type of impact later on. But you're right. There is no way you can be sleeping on what Zeka is able to provide for a team like LNG. The escapes that we have seen from him, the setups that we have also seen. This guy's for real. And he has absolutely been someone that has been tested in the LPL. So don't think that he's going to shy away from this type of moment, this type of opportunity, this opponent in Zeus on the other side. And, I mean, any of the matchups here, you're not given a huge edge either way. It's slight um, advantages lane to lane. And then as a team, this is this is the hardest one to predict. Probably the most even, I know, because T1 has so many fans. I think it's like 88% of people are picking T1 in this matchup. But that is not an accurate representation of what the power levels actually are for these two squads. It really isn't. I think the difference maker is whether we see on the day the difference of Faker, right? The Faker that came back to this T1 lineup after all the struggles and was instantly able to turn around the ship, see those results, see those changes in the way that the players were able to move around the map and make things happen. That's a big difference, having the shot caller Faker on your squad. If he's making them, them right calls, I got T1 moving on. Yeah, I, f I feel like LNG is legit a top four team. Fourth best maybe at this event, but T1's a little bit better. It feels like there's a little bit of magic around them as well because they've been playing at such a high level. So I'm taking T1 as well, but this is going to be a close series. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people have their excitement, have their hopes of this world's resting on this one. And it is crazy again. This is the one that we roll in through with quarterfinals, having to say goodbye to either one of T1, Faker trying to win Worlds at home, the Redemption arc, or LNG trying to rise up, trying to say, no, we are the true LPL champions coming for that world title. I think I got a hunch who the crowd will be cheering for uh, in <laughs> this matchup over a little bit. <laughs> in South Korea. The hardest road for DRX 2022. What a run it was. But KT is saying we're ready to one up in terms of difficulty level. Drawing JDG, 7% of people are believing in the upset for KT. Obviously, JDG are massive favorites. They would be massive favorites against any matchup in quarterfinals and going forward at Worlds. But KT has been built in the forge of LCK and LPL only matchup. So I, I know JDG are going to be favorites, but let's not be sleeping on KT because they have shown up and put up at this event. There needs to be some respect paid to a couple members of KT Rolster. And one of those ones is going to be that duo in the bottom lane of aiming and Lahens. I think a lot of people still sleeping on what they're doing, still seeing maybe a couple questionable, a couple of wonky things coming through from Lahens on what he's doing and not seeing the end result, not seeing what happens for the rest of the team. you got to be paying attention to that when you're looking at KT Rolster and what they're going to do and what their chances are heading into this series against JDG. It's going to seem crazy, though, because it's not going to really matter everything that I just said nice about <laughs> your boys aiming and Lahens in the bottom lane because on the other side, you're neutralized and you're surpassed by your boy Ruler and missing there for JDG. The only avenue, the only way KT is coming away with the series win here is we need a big level up from Keen because what we saw on the Swiss stage, sure, picking the rise is fun and a nice little pocket pick, but he has not been up to the level of the rest of his KT teammates and has not been up to the level that we're accustomed to seeing from one of the cons most consistent top leaders in the history of the LCK. He's got to be better against 369. He's going to have to be better. He's going to get a little bit of help, too, from your man Cuz in the jungle, someone that we think has been doing really well 
throughout this event, not getting quite enough recognition throughout the year and especially right now, what he is doing and how important he is for KT. I'm looking at, at Keen for sure in that top side, but then you still have questions in that mid lane for BDD, the guy who is relatively stable. How stable can you be against Knight when he's trying to dip dance around on the Ari or whatever champion he's going to get to make it an absolute menace on the side of JDG? We got, we're going to get a Vagar sighting out of BDD. We know that's a nice little fallback pick out of him. He's always the guy who might throw in a Zareth, a Belkaz mid, something kind of wacky. I would love to see something wacky, something different to spice it up, be that type of style, be that pocket pick within these best of fives where I think it actually can develop a little bit stronger, that type of in a series meta compared to the best of threes. I don't know if you take that risk into the side of JDG, thinking about players like Kanavi, like Knight, and how aggressive they might want to play into one of these options like Azareth, like a Velkaz, and really set that far behind. I don't know if you run that risk if you're KT. I, you know, I, I BDD has looked so comfortable on Nico, Azir, Talia. So maybe those get pulled away and he's forced into something crazy. But I'm so hard pressed, despite KT leveling up so much, three games, JDG losing out of five. I just can't see that happening to this team. The only way I do see it happening is the magic that can happen in these best of five series where you do get that momentum. You pick up a win with this. Oh, this thing is, you know, powerful. They don't ban it out. They want to challenge, whatever. However it falls out, you got to find a way in this best of five series to throw JDG off. I think that is the only chance you have if you are KT Rolsters, getting that momentum on your side, riding it through to an extra win, whatever type of thing pushing you to that ultimate deciding game for that victory. That's what you need if you are KT Rolster, because you're up against it. Mega uphill climb against a Titan like JDG. The only way I see it happening, and I don't see it happening in quarters, but JDG maybe falling behind in the series and getting in their own head, looking too far ahead the Golden Road. We could be the first team. Oh my God, it's crumbling. It's falling away. They've shown no signs of that mental breakdown so far uh, this year. So I don't see it happening in quarters, maybe further on. God bless you, KT. You had a hell of a run, but it's JDG. I think everybody knew it. You saw the reactions when the draw came through that whoever is getting... <sighs> sacrificed to JDG. It wasn't going to be good. And of course, the hometown reactions for KT, not that much better seeing them thrown to JDG. But I will say, still still very excited to see this matchup. I think a lot of people, even if you remove that, that aspect of knowing one of these teams is gone, so for the year, feeling happy about this one. It's still not KT that has the lowest chance on the pickups to be winning. That honor goes to BLG against Gen G, which is maybe a little bit of disrespect to BLG, but more so, it's got to be praise for Gen G because you look at their numbers, they were far and away the most dominant team to qualify. Yes, G2 was a much easier best of three matchup than LNG, which JDG had to go through, but Gen G have looked the most dominant at this event. Oh, baby, the most dominant team that we have seen at the event with the, the least amount of games here. So this is what we can categorize Gen G. I saw a post that we're getting a little bit of criticism for where they've played the least amount of different champions. But it's also like, yeah, but they've also played like four games. Three, th three, four games, guys. Come on. Of course, they're not going to have those type of numbers. Gen G versus BLG. What a matchup this is going to be. I think a lot of, of that reaction that you're talking about is one people paying that respect to Gen G and saying, you know what? We love T1. T1 beat BLG. You are better than Je than T1. We've seen that. We have verified that through these LCK championships. Yes, we're going to give you that respect in this type of matchup, but I think too many people are slamming down BLG, writing it off as the BLG that did get dismantled, get dispatched by T1, and then later had their struggles, had their mistakes against a G2 in that important promotion matchup that they are looking at this one as that instant slam dunk for Gen G. I'm here to bring back that painful MSI reminder of that is Giga Bin in the top side having his way and, and throwing around Doran. Yeah, and obviously that's a little bit personal for uh, Gen G and Doran to kind of get some revenge. That top lane is probably the biggest edge you're giving over to BLG. You're going to need that level up from Doran. 
And the biggest mismatch, uh, the Gen G side, has got to be Chovy versus Yagao. We talked about how focused and serious Chovy looked in their limited four-game sample size, but that mid lane might get out of hand in this series. I'm 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 scared for Yagao because from my understanding, we've been having Chovy in the whole Super Saiyan, you know, oxygen deprivation tank, everything, getting himself ready to train and be prepared for this knockout stage. He is going to be a beast. He's going to be a monster. And he's not the only threat on Gen G. You're going to have to be worried about if you are BLG because, yes, Elk can dish out some damage. But I don't think he has stepped up or leveled up or evolved the way that your boy Pays has done all the way throughout this year. And, you know, I don't want to take too much into these kind of teaser type videos that they're pumping out. But I will say this year, this event, Chovy, he's, he's leaning into a bit of trash talking. He seems more confident than he's ever been in these. And I mean, my man's won three LCK titles in a row. I think he's earned himself a bit of trash talk. It's hard in the LCK region to kind of feel yourself, feel that mojo in that type of way when you've had icons like Faker in the scene. But for someone like Chovy to accumulate this type of success, say, you know, to kind of F you to the haters that have said Chokey and all these type of things in the past and have this type of resume built up this strength, this respect, yes. This is time to start seeing a little bit of that trash talk, a little bit of put some respect on your boy Chovy's name, and we're going to see those performances back it up. I got Gen G walloping BLG in this one, even if I want people to still not quite be as over the moon with Gen G and underestimating what type of challenge BLG is going to bring into this series. I just think that Gen G's got enough in the tank to push on through. I got it 3 1 Gen G. They're dropping game one because they let Bin get Jax, and then they ban it the rest of the series. That's the lesson learned. What's going on, Score? I got no way he's he knows, he knows that, man. There's no way I'm seeing that Jax going through. Gen G, 3-0 for me. A big part of it as well is going to be Peanut. I think not enough talk has been about what Peanut brings to Gen G and what type of form he's in right now. Going under the radar, nice and easy. It's... Again, I'll be shocked if it's four LPL teams all going through. It could happen. There's a dimension where that happens, but Gen G has looked uh, so unbelievably good, and they can all get through because NRG is taking down Weibo. So at best, you're getting three LPL squads. But the LCS is first on the docket. We'll be back to recap all that action. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful people. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.